Tonight, NBC5 investigates. Dozens of school buildings now sit empty after the Chicago School Board closed them last year to save money. But we found they're still costing taxpayers millions of dollars. Here's Phil Rogers. This is what's left of Betsy Ross School. NBC5 investigates obtained these photos taken inside the building, which has sat vacant for the last 18 months. One of 49 Chicago public schools closed last year. And here's what we found inside another empty school. Lights and heat still on. Same here and here and at nearly every other empty school we visited. So many vacant schools. CPS said closing them would save tens of millions of dollars. But NBC5 investigates wanted to know how much they're still costing taxpayers. That was nearly a year ago, and we ended up having to sue the Board of Education to find out. This is what we got. Utility bills for empty school buildings totaling more than $2.2 million in the last 10 months alone. Almost as much as when they were open. In a system that needs every dime it can get, you're spending $2.2 million to heat empty buildings. I look at it a little differently, as you might expect. I look at it that we're saving $43 million every year that we would otherwise be spending. Spending, according to Chicago School COO Tom Terrell, that is no longer needed to staff and operate these now empty schools. And he says they figured these utility costs into those overall savings. You're correct to say that we're spending money to maintain the buildings at a certain level. And I think that's a rational and reasonable and responsible thing to do. Not everyone agrees. Numbers that you've given me in front of me here as a result of a lawsuit are the, are the hardest numbers that I've seen on this stuff yet. Acting CTU President Jesse Sharkey says the public needs these actual figures because he contends the board's savings projections were vastly exaggerated. What's happening right now is the school system is hiding behind a wall of secrecy in which they aren't being forthcoming with the information that would allow us to really compare the claims that they made to the reality two years later. At this building, which used to house Earl Elementary School on the southwest side, we found the lights and heat still on at a cost of more than $106,000 last year costing more now than when it was open as a school. Why are the lights on? In some buildings, they're on at the recommendation of the police department for security reasons. Indeed, the utility bills fade in comparison to the costs of a vandalized school like Betsy Ross. How did that happen? We had it all secured. We had eyes on it. We made a number of arrests, uh, but it doesn't undo the damage that occurred. At a cost of millions, NBC5 investigates obtained this internal CPS appraisal, which estimated that it will now cost $12 million more than the board's original estimate to fix up this building for sale or repurpose. You need to get these off the books. Love to do that. And we're doing it. You can check out the utility expenses for every vacant school by going to NBCChicago.com and clicking on the investigations page. There, you can also send us your story tips and ideas. Tonight, an NBC5 investigates exclusive. Illinois law requires every school child to get vaccinated for measles, whooping cough, and other serious diseases. But we found tens of thousands of kids in the Chicago area may not be getting them, and that's creating a potential risk for every child. Here's NBC5 investigates Tammy Leitner with the story. Tammy? Rob, doctors say the higher the concentration of unvaccinated students in a school, the bigger the chance that any child in that school, even one who's been vaccinated, can get a serious illness. But NBC5 Investigates has found hundreds of Chicago area schools allowing alarming number of unprotected kids into their classrooms at levels considered unsafe by state and federal officials. And no one seems to be doing much about it. Is your daughter vaccinated, not vaccinated? Yes, she is. Charles David makes sure his 16-year-old daughter, Jessica, is properly immunized. But she's in the minority at Shrum Memorial School in Calumet City. In fact, NBC5 Investigates has found that nearly 70% of students here were not vaccinated for one or more preventable diseases for the last two years. Wow, that's a lot. When the kids get sick, they recommend just keep them home. As they were allowed to attend school without immunizations. Our investigation revealed one in 10 schools in the Chicago area falls below safe vaccination levels set by state and federal health officials. Some families say their kids can't be vaccinated because of medical reasons or religious beliefs. Other parents simply never bother to get their child shots, and often the school looks the other way. Does the system work? I would say no. 
Superintendent Deborah Benson took over Parkview Christian Academy in Yorkville six months ago. She says the prior administration did not track student immunizations. I don't even know for sure that they were vaccinated or not. I just know that we didn't have a record of it. In fact, NBC5 investigates found that more than 500 Chicago area schools have never bothered to submit any immunization records to the state for the last five years, even though the state requires it every year. That means that a parent has no way of knowing how many of their child's classmates are unprotected from serious diseases. Do those schools face any type of penalty for not turning in the paperwork? We mostly work with them to try to get them in compliance. Mary Fergus says the State Board of Education can withhold state aid when schools are non-compliant, but she admits that has never happened. Are you want to do this one? Elgin mother Sherry Davis doesn't want her kids vaccinated, so she was granted a religious exemption by their school. The things that are in vaccines um, and how they're made, it's just not something that I want to put into my child's body. Are you in kindergarten or first grade? But for doctors like pediatrician Allison Bartlett, there is no gray area. These are very safe, and I don't want us to have to go back to having measles outbreaks killing kids and pregnant women having stillborn babies because of chickenpox because we decided that vaccines weren't important. Meanwhile, parents like Charles David are left feeling helpless, doing all that he can to protect his daughter, but knowing it may not be enough. The state needs to step in and say something. Officials at Shrum Memorial School never returned any of our phone calls about their high rate of non-immunized kids. Now state law requires that unvaccinated students be kept out of school, but school officials and parents tell us that does not always happen. And the state acknowledges that it doesn't follow up. Now you can search our database to find out if your child's school has a high rate of non-immunized kids or if it's ignoring the law by not reporting at all. Go to NBCChicago.com and search vaccinations. Tammy, I bet you're going to be hearing a lot from parents oh, out there. Yes, I'm sure. Tonight, NBC5 investigates missing reports of violent incidents in schools throughout the city and suburbs. If something happens at your child's school, the law says you're supposed to be able to find out about it. But NBC5 investigates has found that is not the case for parents with children in hundreds of schools throughout the area. Here's Marion Brooks. Play. Paige is a six-year-old first grader whose mom wanted to make sure her school in Belvedere was safe. So she Googled it. I happened to come across some weapons incidences. In a newspaper. She wanted to learn more and discovered this, the school incident reporting system maintained by the Illinois State Board of Education. This is excellent. What a great way for us to figure out, do we take this school district or the neighboring school district? So she tried to look up her daughter's school and district and found nothing not even the weapons incident she'd found on her own. My reaction probably would be what a lot of parents were. What? Turns out her school district hasn't filed a report on the system in years. And this is the official means by which parents are supposed to be able to find out about drugs, weapons, and violent incidents in their schools. But NBC5 Investigates has found most schools in the Chicago area don't use it. It's a law that these types of incidents have to be reported. Former State Senator Susan Garrett. Right now there's a reporting system where there's no enforcement. So we wanted to find out what is reported. So NBC5 Investigates got all the reports for the last two and a half years for both the city and the suburbs and found thousands of instances of drugs, violence, and weapons. More than 1,400 reports of weapons in elementary, middle, and high schools, including 92 involving guns or explosives. And that's not just in the city. One third of those reports were in the suburbs. But it's what's not being reported that may be even more alarming, like these incidents from just the past year. 911, what is your emergency? We found a gun in the school. A semi automatic pistol fired inside a middle school in Berkeley a handgun taken to an elementary school in Chicago, a shotgun discovered at a high school in Elgin. The mere fact that there's a shotgun in a school is obviously alarming. Not one of those cases was reported to the school incident reporting system. In fact, NBC5 investigates discovered of the 2100 schools in Chicago and the suburbs, almost 70% of them do not report incidents like this. State law clearly requires every school to report incidents to local and state police, but not necessarily through the school incident reporting system. The only way for parents to find out about them. And that's why many parents like Allison looking for incidents in their school 
won't find anything. We should be strong enough and willing to share so we can fix these problems. In 2012, Garrett introduced a bill to clarify and strengthen the school incident reporting in the state, but it failed to pass. They should be able to do this. We're not talking about you know, after school programs. We're talking about some very dangerous issues. I want everybody to know about this. I want people to stand up for children, for their safety. We tried repeatedly to talk to the Belvedere School Superintendent about how his district reports incidents, but he didn't return any of our calls. We've also compiled a list of which Chicago and suburban schools file reports to the state and which do not. To check up on your child's school, go to NBCChicago.com and click on the investigations page. Marion Brooks, NBC5 Investigates. Tonight, NBC5 Investigates, the toxic dangers around your child's school. We have learned that dangerous chemicals are stored near schools all over the Chicago area. Schools that would have been evacuated in the event of a chemical disaster. Tonight, a tool to help you find if your school is in the range of a potential chemical disaster. Here's NBC5's Phil Rogers. April 17, 2013. As a fire rages at a fertilizer plant in the tiny community of West Texas, the facility erupts in a violent explosion. 15 people were killed, 160 injured. The West Intermediate School, just a half mile away, destroyed. And many believe West Texas should serve as a warning. If you're inside these vulnerability zones, you should be concerned. Vulnerability zones, that's the EPA's worst case scenario term for the areas around plants using what are known as extremely hazardous substances. After a chemical disaster at Union Carbide's Bhopal, India plant killed 2,500 people in 1984, the EPA focused on what it considered the most dangerous chemicals, requiring companies using them to submit detailed reports on what would happen if they got loose. You have to go to an EPA office to read those reports. But a Washington group, the Center for Effective Government, did just that. They read thousands of the reports and put them online. Here in Chicago, these are the vulnerability zones, and these are the schools that would have to be evacuated in the event of a disaster. In Chicago, there are about 1,300 schools and about 600,000 students that are inside vulnerability zones in the greater area. Take Ideal School in southwest suburban countryside. NBC5 Investigates has found that the school sits inside the vulnerability zones of seven different plants, including this one, where the zone stretches for an incredible 25 miles. Knowing is not enough. You have to really have a mechanism for acting. Rafael More Arasso is chairman of the U.S. Chemical Safety Board, which investigates hundreds of chemical accidents every year. He calls the CEG's efforts to get this data out a good first step, but says now citizens need to decide what they do with that information. What are we going to do to decrease the risk of vulnerable places? Like happened in West Texas, they build this school half a mile from the plant simply because the land was available. Indeed, here in north suburban Gurnee, Spalding Elementary sits just six-tenths of a mile from a plant which has a vulnerability zone of 10 miles, covering nearly 100 schools. Do you think it is incumbent upon schools to have a plan to get kids outside of these zones? Yeah, I do. Superintendent John Hutton said he had no idea about the zone his schools lie within and thinks it's time they prepared should the worst case scenario happen. Actually get on buses and move them to that part because the more you practice it, the more comfortable people are with the evacuation process, the better we'll be at it. You can find out if your school is in one or more of these vulnerability zones. We have an interactive map and you can find it by going to NBCChicago.com and clicking on the investigations page. Phil Rogers, NBC5 Investigates.